of loneliness and misery and suffering and unhappiness, and it's all over much too quickly. The question is, have I learned anything about life? Hello, everybody. Welcome to the second episode of season two of Essence of Zen After Dark, which we're recording on February 11th, I think. Is that what today is? Today? I think. Yes. Thank you, Andy. And I'm joined by my co-host for the day. That is Andy, who's ba- basically the evolved form of space dandy. He is like, uh, I want to say omnipotent, even though he will deny it by every chance he gets. Uh, but yeah, uh, Andy, it's good to have you back for season two. Uh, how you feel? How you been? It's uh, good to be back. I'm feeling like an omnipotent space being. I mean, like a normal human. Um, and, uh, you know, hanging in there, staying indoors, enjoying the high life, and uh, being bombarded by all sorts <laughs> of just sort of strange news. Ah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. He's dead. Oh man! Um, episode one, I started off with a, a mug of um, of very, very cold, dark coffee. Very, very dark coffee. Um, but um, today, I'm starting off the the show with an actual. I mean, I, I shouldn't have to preference actual coffee because this is also coffee, also coffee, hot coffee though. Um, but yeah, went down the wrong pipe with the, you know, living the high life currently as I look into it's the true, camera. It's true. No matter how hard we try, we still cannot breathe coffee. <laughs> yes, but I'm uh, living. But the you high know, life shout of... out for trying again. You know, no, 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 no. I'm not going to try again. No, <laughs> it was an accident the 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 first time. It'll be an accident the hundredth time, and maybe on purpose the hundred and first time. Maybe. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, so uh, I didn't actually introduce myself. Hopefully those who are watching and listening know who I am. Uh, my name is Zane Zenokami Blaylock. I am the host of your podcast. And someone had asked me recently, what is the, the, the origin behind the name of the show, Essence of Zen After Dark? And uh, it's actually very uh, prominent that I bring this up now because someone actually stated that in episode one, I looked gosh darn tired. Uh, a consequence of now being on the video, Andy. I must say. Um, but no, the origin of the story is quite literally because when we first did the podcast uh, version one, like two, three years ago, um, we, we just got together online to talk about various topics literally around like 10 o'clock uh, Eastern time. So it was just after dark. And we continued that tradition with me, uh, my time period or time zone now, which is around nine o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So it's still after dark. And yes, I am quite tired after a full day of work and uh insomnia for the last three months but you know toughen it out for the people Mm. yes because i love i love the people you know who else i love andy who else do you love roto noah zoro from uh one piece uh so before we actually get in like delving into today's show i just want to give a really big shout out to the one piece manga and anime uh, and the creator uh ichirio Oda, I probably butchered the last name. Um, last name being Ichirio, Ichirio, whatever. Um, they, he uh, reached uh, chapter one thousand of the manga, and the anime is is closely coming to episode one thousand as well. Uh, so just big props. I'm a big fan of One Piece, as anyone who follows me on social media may know. Uh, my wallpaper on this laptop is that of uh, Roronora Zoro. And um, they're holding a contest, uh, or not contest, but a poll. The first world global poll for most popular character. And we all get a chance to vote every single day. And I just want to put everyone's attention to go to onepiecewt100.com slash en or whatever abbreviation for your particular language for your country. And you get to pick from a list of classic to, you know, only seen one time like the most obscure characters you can also vote for as your favorite uh, one piece character and as you can probably see on the screen currently for those who are watching the youtube version i am voting for zoro for like the uh, 40th something time out of the full length of the, the the poll so yeah congrats to oda for reaching 1000 chapters uh keep at it and i will keep reading until the day you stop 
So, uh, other than you really that, really think Zero's gonna win it? Oh, oh, it's it's actually kind of close. Um, pe- so like people have been keeping up with uh, like the because the, there's also a page where you can see the hot characters who's like uh, uh, hot for the hour in their ranking of top three. And it's basically been Zoro in every region, uh, mostly throughout the entire day. Sometimes switching up with Luffy. Sometimes, every now and then, switching up with Zoro. Or, no, sorry, uh, with Sanji. Uh, but he has a good chance to actually finally uh, dethrone Luffy. Probably first time ever. But uh, we 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 will see. It, it, it will be a very close call, in my opinion. But again, I'm biased. I'm a big Zoro fan. Again, I have a baby Shusui, literally here on camera with me. So. Eh. Anywho's, um, more sounds like good stuff. Uh, hopefully, I'm 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 really uh, banking on it. But the next stuff is not so good. So, ha- have you played uh, Shadow of Mordor and the sequel Shadow of War? I have only played Shadow of War. Really? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Did you like Did you like the game though? The mechanics of it and, and etc. I did, I did. Um, Actually, did I tell you... So, I I don't think I did, because we haven't spoken in a while. Mm. So, the reason why I played Shadow of War is because... Remember when I was like, I'm doing things for Microsoft, can't tell you what they are. Oh, yes. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah, so my contract is over. Um, and I tested the uh, Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S. That's what I was doing. Um, and in the course of testing that hardware, uh, I uh, interacted with Shadow of War, and I was like, this is a good game, and that's why I played it. On on the PlayStation, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, it seems that uh, you're not the only one who really enjoyed the mechanics of that game and, and thought it was a good game. Uh, Warner Brothers, the parent company who owns like the you know, the property for that game, apparently also like the mechanics enough to try to put a patent on the actual mechanics of the game, a la the Nemesis system, which for those who may not know is essentially the mechanics where you can find specific uh, orcs who if you kill someone next to them may you know cower or whatever remember what you did or if if they kill you or you know the battle gets interrupted they will remember you remember how you played how you fight and they will adapt to the way you play and try to basically one up you the next meeting you you have with them as well as potentially tipping off other orc uh, captains or leaders or whatever, whatever they call them uh, so you essentially make the game harder for yourself as you continue to go on and have these interactions. And it's, it's really cool. It's really cool and should be uh, uh, commended for the efforts for that it's mechanic. A very dynamic method of doing storytelling. Yes. Really cool. Um, but of course, the entire industry, or I guess, let me say, some people in the industry and the entire gaming community is really rubbed the wrong way with the idea of patenting uh, this mechanic because it, it's... Uh, it stagnates innovation. It stagnates other uh, games having the ability to, you know, do something similar. Because you don't have to actually do the exact same thing. But the thing with patents and the fact that this is one is a uh, allegedly really vague. I'm not a law specialist or you know a legal uh, specialist, uh, but it's, it's it's really vague in how there's like, oh, you know, this patent covers enemies learning from your actions, which that alone is not what just makes a nemesis system and there are other games that have mechanics where uh, enemies will learn how you play or just the game engine itself will learn how you play and adapt to it and it'd be really weird and scummy to see warner brothers going after uh, various different uh, game developers and studios for even having something similar to the nemesis system and it's, it's just not a good look uh, what are your thoughts i don't know about the wording on the patent um, but I do know that uh, if this goes through, did it go through or is it pending? I believe it's I, pending. I, no, I believe it went through. It was pending for five years or, or them trying to push it for five years. Oh, that's that's a lot of years. Um, the the issue that I take with it, I mean, it makes sense that you would want to, you know, patent some, something that, you know, is a good idea and has the ability to generate money. You know, I'm not about to you know, ask Nintendo to just be like, hey, can I just, like, make my own Switch? Um, 
but I think that the the real loss is the fact that the uh, that Lord of the Rings series, I believe, is like done. I don't think they're coming out with any more in the series due to, I'm sure, some legal nonsense or maybe the uh, the teams just moved on or something. Um, but I don't think we're going to see any more games out of that series, which makes me wonder if it if now that the patent is in place, who like who's going to use it? Because the team behind that series isn't going to use it. So you're going to need to find another way to implement it. And my concern would be less about, um, you know, other teams getting to use it and more of just the general shutdown of that system in general. Because the Nemesis system is a great system. Um, but if it's not going to get implemented, then that's that would be, in my opinion, a more unfortunate loss than just you know not allowing it to spread around. I concur. I concur greatly, actually. I don't know. We'll we'll just have to see the the. I the... really don't mind the patent. I just hope they use it. That's the real. That's the summation right there. That, that's fair. And I, if they and, patent uh, it and then they just sit on it and they <laughs> slap people across the face for coming anywhere near it, like some sort of angry mother hen then that's going to be very disappointing. Yes. Um, and I hope that's not the case. If, if you're going to patent it, I hope you at least use it, you know. And to reiterate, you know, they might not come after people with a, with a, a hammer of, of, of uh, lawsuits if, they, if someone uses something similar or et cetera. We don't, we don't know. We'll just have to wait and see how they treat this. Uh, if the mechanic will come back in a different game, as you stated, um, or not. But... Uh, I agree with you in a very basis of the sense, but also Warner Brothers has been rubbing me the wrong way for the last three years, and uh, I don't know. I, it, what's the show without a tangent? I want to go on a quick tangent. <laughs> um, this comes at a weird time, uh, or not necessarily uh, like uh, them trying to do this at a weird time, um, but this might be... Hearing this makes me feel like Warner Brothers is trying to keep a grasp of their foothold in a particular industry since, you know, Disney continues to just devour other studios and other companies and maintain a very strong vice like death grip on every industry that they're a part of, especially after recently they shut down uh, or they announced that they will be or has, I, I forget, but it's going to happen if it has not yet happened. They shut down um, uh, blue sky studios, the studios behind ice age uh, robots um, and something else. I've, I've, uh, oh, the 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 Will Smith and Tom Holland uh, spy movie with Will Smith's character being turned into a pigeon. I forget the name of that movie, but that was one of their most recent projects. Oh, gee. yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, and you know, look, regardless of, how, of what you think of the quality of the Blue Sky Studios movies and whatnot, and how they may compare to other movies underneath the Disney brand, the Disney label, etc. The issue isn't that, like, oh, well, if you didn't think they were really great, good riddance, blah, blah, blah. It's just the fact that, again, uh, Disney has consumed and, and silenced yet another quote-unquote competitor, or just alternative to, you know, animated movies, or, or you know, action movies, and etc. And it, it's just weird and since Warner Brothers is a, is a, is a big, you know, uh, I don't want to say sister or brother, but you know, it's, it's in the same game as Disney. They might just be trying to hold on to their life for anything that they can that's good in their eyes and just say, we don't want Disney or, or someone else to do what we do and potentially, you know, overtake us. Just not saying that's what's happening, but that's what it feels like when I first see this with everything else going on with Disney and Amazon and Google and oh boy, did I have did I add Google Stadia to this list? Nope. Okay, Andy, we're, we're continuing trekking with the tangents. Um, so, did you hear that Google shut down their um, their little uh, branch team that was going to be dedicated for making games like first party games on the Stadia platform? I did. So do do you personally think this is a sign that they're they're going to get ready to axe Stadia in a few years? Yes. <laughs> I don't know what's so funny about that. No, it's, it's funny because like everyone kind of saw this coming, like like quite literally. Yeah, of course. 
it's, it's, it's Google. It, it, it's it's really and to be fair, one can say it that doesn't even have to be Google. Anybody who tries to fourth wheel the uh, console uh, wars right now is just going to get shot down. True, true. It's so crowded, and the like the stakes are so high that there's no way you can you can get in. See, here's the funny thing that I, I I honestly believe that if Google approached Stadia a little bit there, well, actually, because it's, it's not really how it was perceived and taken that is actually the real factor of whether or not they, they, they would want to keep it I going. mean, it didn't help. It, 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 it didn't. It didn't. So if, if they would have approached differently and, like, not charged for a, uh, uh, I, I won't even say a beta, like, like an early gamma level product, uh, like full price, then they may have had a better reception of the user base. But mm, because from what I hear, for those who actually have it and they have good internet, it actually works fairly well. As a matter of fact, a lot of people who got or used Lydia for Cyberpunk, which we will talk about later in the show, uh, actually had really good experiences with Cyberpunk on uh, Stadia. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the proof that it, it can work is there, but it wasn't well uh, handled on the launch because it really wasn't a launch. It was a test sequence. And uh, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's what you get. Um, but I think it may have even still gotten shut down at, at some point or, you know, will quote unquote, cause it hasn't quite just yet because you know, it's, it's also about money and Google. I, I have no idea what the hell they're, they're doing as of late, uh, but they are really, really, Oh, they're not they're not fun anymore. And they're they're not they're not dependable anymore. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Wait, are you saying Google's not dependable anymore? No, not not at all. Oh, oh that's that's what I'm saying, that they're not not at all. Okay. <laughs> and just making just making sure. And so by dependable, um what I mean by that is because like Dependable, I'm not saying is they're trustworthy. They are, they've never been trustworthy. Well, maybe once in their, their company lifetime for like three minutes. But dependable as in if they created a product that they actually put a foot behind, one that they actually put their name behind, their backing behind, that product, that platform would still be standing for a long period of time. It wasn't until recently where they just started giving everything the acts of like, you know, Give, give give it one year. It wasn't until they start taking really well loved, strong standing, you know, monolithic platforms and applications, trying to evolve it into something else forcefully, not liking what they got from it, changing it like three or four more times. And what I'm what I'm referring to here is from uh, uh, Google Voice slash messaging to Google Hangouts to Google Hangouts 2.0, 3.0, 4.0 then to Google Duo and Google Allo, then they axed Allo, kept Duo, and then went back to Hangouts and said, hey, we're going to keep Hangouts. They're not dependable anymore. Google Drive used to have, like, you know, uh, free uh, photo storage at high definition. You know, it, it wasn't uh, source quality. It wasn't your raw quality, but they would have free storage for your high definition version of your photos. They're getting rid of that this year. And while someone said, well, yeah, I mean, you know, I still have 15 gigs worth of storage in Google Drive to use. That's true. But I guarantee you give it two more years and they're probably going to add even more limitations to it. Uh, Google admin consoles for like businesses has undergone a lot of different policy changes, a lot of different changes in terms of the UI and the mechanics that it works for. Google Drive went from a great community. Uh, sorry, Drive. Uh, Google. Oh, damn. What was it called? Um, plus Google Plus. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> uh. Uh, went from a great community of engineers, scientists, uh, uh, great hobbyists to a uh, cesspool of your typical social uh, media platform, you know, jargon. Then they forcefully integrated into YouTube for whatever reason. I still don't understand why they did that. Then they axed it. Couldn't ax it because when they axed it, they broke YouTube because they, they, they integrated it too much. And then so they, they actually still have Google Plus, but only for like a certain business type uh, account holdings. And it's not really plus anymore. It, it's, it's just weird. And so they're, they're not dependable with the things that they make. 
even Android has gone from, you know, an open system that was very free and, and do what you want from the Google Nexus line to them trying to be premium and very locked in with their, 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 their own uh, wall garden like iOS, which is nothing wrong with that. But for Android, that's not what that was. And so when we got the Pixel line, okay, it was different. They had a great camera. That's about it. And then as the Pixel line continued to evolve, they, they've just ran it into the ground. They, they're using really old hardware still with better software, sure, but they're still charging you an arm and a leg like the hardware is worth that price. Almost like it's, it's for the name. But then if, you, if you're gonna do that, at least have high quality materials. But they don't do that either. They're not dependable anymore. Uh, uh. Huh. Hmm, sorry, mini rant. Nice. You know who you know who else isn't dependable? <laughs> Zane, before we continue, shoot. Um, this is going to require you to edit and post. Um, <laughs> Craig left the chat. Is that okay? Yes, I. Th that's why earlier before I was starting, I uh, started like three other types of recordings for the audio. It's the same okay. thing that we did on the first episode. And I, I, I got sure. to be honest and, with you. In a second, I need to go get the food. It just arrived. Okay, go for it. So give me like two minutes. <laughs> All right. Welcome back. Glad to be back. <laughs> um, so. Yes. Moving on. Uh, moving on. I believe the last thing I stated was, Andy, you know who else is not dependable? Um, yeah, I mean, I do, but I want you to say it. <laughs> E-A. Uh, anything, actually, from EA. Electronic Arts. They're, they're hot garbage. Really, really, yep. really hot garbage, and I and I and I mean that with the most sincere, honest opinion. Where not like, oh, I'm being funny, or I'm being like, you know, uh, uh, what's the word? I'm not exaggerating. I'm not being hyperbolic. Um, no, they're they are they are hot, steamy garbage, and I'm very worried about the remaster of the um, uh, Mass Effect series that they're doing one through three. Or, or, or no, because you can't really remaster Andromeda because it's not really anything to remaster. Just things to fix. I was about to say first you would have to master Andromeda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what they, what, what may possibly come from the Mass Effect remaster. Yeah, but I'm I, excited about it as well. The way I'm excited to watch cars get crushed at a monster truck rally. Yeah, that's actually a great analogy. Yep, it's going to be a spectacle, <laughs> dude. Like, actually, uh, already they they kind of went through a controversy, uh, co controversy, a controversy. Um, you drunk already, Zane? No, it's just the braces. I have rubber oh. bands now. Now I feel bad. <laughs> um, but oh, around around butts. And this is a part of a topic that I'll, I'll kind of also kind of I will rant on at the end of the show or towards the end of the show. Um, man, people people don't know how to do context or maybe they do and they don't care. Or maybe it is just like the 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 the, the psychology behind the quick and fast information dump of the Internet. Um, but uh, some 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 media headlines were like, "Oh, hey guys, guess what? Um, Mass Effect has changed some camera angles uh, around." Um, oh crap! Which which character was it? Uh, Miranda? I think Miranda. I Miranda's think so. butt. And I was like, oh, "Okay." And people were saying, "This is Miranda's censorship." Butt will no longer be featured. Which is not true because her butt will definitely be featured. They, they, if if you go and actually you know read the changes. They just won't show but her it's butt. Not the same. <laughs> True, because I mean the game is also not the same. It, it has higher poly counts, which one could say would make her butt look even even better. So I mean, do you want the same or do you want more high definition butt? I don't. You know, pick or choose, internet. Pick or choose, but or pick a chew. Huh? Um, what they changed. For the listeners and viewers out there who may not be knowing, they're going like, I, I really don't understand why people can get this angry about butts. Though in a postmodern internet environment where someone can lose their freaking minds over a nine foot tall vampire lady who they call mama or mommy, excuse me, which I, I, I got to admit, I, I do love me some lady uh, Dimitrescu. Jane, uh, stay hmm. on target. Bump stay me with the hammer. Stay on target. <laughs> they changed a simple scene where 
Miranda is talking to Shepard, the main character, you know, fem ship or male ship or fem ma- mask ship, whatever. Um, and she talks about her sister and her family and like a dark part of her, her past and a very emotional moment. And in that original scene of her talking about this very important emotional part of her character, the scene is focusing on her butt. And in, in retrospect, and even, even during the game, a lot of people were just like, this is a bad shot for this particular scene. It doesn't really fit the mood. It doesn't fit the ambiance. It doesn't fit the scene. It's, it's just bad. And so they changed it. They also changed the scene where like uh, Shep's uh, crotch is, is, is like kind of in focus. What some people say, oh, well, that's, you know, uh, equality. Okay, right, sure. But if you're playing Fem Shep, she's wearing a dress and she uses the exact same skeletal frame. So, you know, legs parted and, you know, you know. So, you know, they changed that scene as well. And people say censorship. But it's like, no, you still can do Fem Shep. You can still see Fem Shep in a dress. You still have Miranda. Her butt is still, you know, very uh, apparent, very visual, uh, very there. Dare I say thick. I know, get the get the horny bonk hammer, whatever. So it's not really censorship, but in today's internet society, people will just scream anything or attach a label to anything at the drop of any bit of information without any full context or any story to the, the actual point. And I, I just, oof. Huh. Mm. Oh man, you're yeah. that clout. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, if you're watching the video, I, I want to know your thoughts. Are you like excited for Mass Effect? Uh, yes, no. Or do you care about the butt controversy? Uh, if you're listening to this as a podcast, if you're an and if anchor, you do care about the butt controversy. Tell us why. What about it specifically? Yeah, I want to know. Yeah. Don't say censorship. <laughs> why did like? I mean, you can say censorship, but I think I feel like that's too much of a catch-all. Yes. You know, there are some things that. I know that there are some people that are like, I despise censorship in all of its forms. There are some forms of censorship that are good and necessary. Mm -hmm. And some things just aren't censorship. A change in scene is not censoring it. Uh, Again, her butt is not being uh, deflated. It's not being removed. There are other scenes with her butt in in focus. True. What do you think this is, Nintendo? Oh, I mean, Nintendo has actually increased their their butt shots as well. <laughs> I'm looking at you, arms, uh, Bayonetta, Smash, Fox's butt back in Melee. Fox has had a very prominent butt for whatever reason. It's true. Like I, we're losing butts left and right. Oh man, it's tragic. 2021 has taken so many things from us. Butts is, is at the top of the list. <sighs> This yeah. is gonna be a first. Real they'll come for our butts, then they'll come for our cheat codes. Our cheat codes, one could say. Zane, hmm. it's only episode two, man. <laughs> you know, you can't do this to me. Uh, someone actually gave me some great feedback, and you know, they express how they actually love the podcast. They, they, they're they're not really into this type of content. But uh, they gave it a shot just because, you know, uh, they, they were like, oh, okay, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. And uh, they really liked it. And I feel bad for them because now they're going to listen to a solid, like, 15-minute talk about butts. And uh, anyway. Whose fault is that? Oh, I take, I take full responsibility. No, full. it's EAs. Oh. Yeah, that was a trick question. Mm. I failed that test. Just like how I failed playing video games. And I had to use uh, cheat codes to get my way through. Or again, as I said, I before, already tried to do that segue. You <laughs> shut me down. No, I didn't. I added to it with a nice oh joke. My God. Uh, but no, this topic is actually a recommendation from a friend of mine. He go by, uh, he, uh, I was going to say he goes he goes by the name Tim, but his name is actually Tim Timothy to be more specific. But Tim, hi Tim, how you doing? Um. He says, you know, why not check out or go into the the idea of the monetization of cheat codes, where essentially uh, back in the day, you know, we had cheat codes in video games to make games either easier or to exploit different menus or to see different things. And now essentially um, those have been turned into specifically microtransactions. And for an example of that, you can look to games like Grand Theft Auto V or specifically Grand Theft Auto Online where you can now pay money to get fake money to quickly buy 
anything you want from new cars, new weapons, uh, attachments for set weapons to give you a boost in the actual game. And so it's kind of funny because hackers have also been using Grand Theft Auto Online to use, you know, hacks, which technically is a type of cheat code, but you get the point that I'm trying to make. And so, Andy, since you are far more experienced in the world of the gaming industry, uh, do you see any, like, full claim or idea to this topic suggestion? Well, first of all, don't conflate hacking with cheat codes. Not at all. Sure. Um, it's important because cheat codes were like included deliberately by the, you know, the designer or the coder developer. Mm -hmm. They're a deliberate inclusion in the game. Maybe not everybody's in on that conclusion. I'm looking at you, adventure. Um, <laughs> Or was it adventure or quest? I don't remember. Um, but it's it's the game where you pick up like a pixel and you drag it. It was like one of the first adventure games of all time. Period for the for a computer. Anyways, those things are in there deliberately. Hacking is not in there deliberately. That aside, um, I think it's interesting because you still see. There, there's been a, um, I don't know if you are aware of this, there's actually been a cultural shift around cheating, or cheat codes, I should say, not cheating, but cheat codes, or, you know, cheat modes, or whatever. You know, I remember in Civ 2, you know, you could turn on cheat mode and just instantly put every single wonder in the world into your capital. And I did that. It was fun. It was neat. <laughs> but something else that cheat codes did is that they let players who were disadvantaged in the game um, experience the game. You know? Um, you could play, like, the original Wolfenstein and make yourself invulnerable. And, yeah, that was cheating. But it would also let you get through the game if you didn't have the skills necessary or, you know, you were too young, you know, um, to even be able to approach the skill level. Um, but, you know, that was more or less what cheat codes did, um, at least initially, mm -hmm. you know, eventually they branched out and started having more options up to including just straight up Easter eggs. Um, but you'll notice that accessibility options are still available in games. And I say accessibility options because nobody, like, when's the last time anybody talked about like cheat codes for a game? Like, that's an archaic term, really. Yeah. There's, you know, there's no cheat codes anymore. But there are accessibility options. And I'm going to bring up two specific um, examples because I watched a video about this a while ago. And I think about it a fair amount. Or at least enough to be able to think about it right now. Um, and that is Celeste and um, Mario Odyssey or Super Mario Odyssey. Um because both of those games have what's called an assist mode. And in the assist mode, um, specifically for Celeste, you can slow down the game's pacing. You can make yourself completely invulnerable. You can give yourself infinite dashes. Um, but when you go into assist mode, the game explains to you what assist mode is. It's there for players who, like, who need help, basically. Um, but... And, and, you know, that's the designer's intention. But obviously, you know, as with any quote unquote cheat, you can just ignore that. You know, you could play the game at 50% rate and have infinite dashes and uh, infinite and like being vulnerable. Um, and nothing gets turned off, not even uh, achievements if you're playing it on like Steam or something like that, which I mean, I don't know if anybody really cares, but it goes to show like what the designer's intention was. But you could just as easily turn around and look at that and be like, well, that's cheating. You know, quote, quote, cheating. Because that fits into the exact same category of manipulating the game to make it easier for you. Which is essentially what cheating is. You know, assuming that you're not doing like random Easter egg sort of things that don't impact the game. You're doing something that does, the designer has deliberately put into the game that makes the game easier in ways that are outside of the critical path. Right? Mm -hmm. Um... And then after Celeste had assist mode, Super Mario Odyssey came out, and it also has an assist mode. 
Um, I'm not as familiar with that assist mode as I am with uh, Celeste, but I do know that one of the um, one of the options is you can turn on like I don't know exactly what it's called in the game itself, but you can basically turn on critical path arrows, and uh, there will be arrows that guide you through every single level that show you exactly where you're supposed to go. Hmm. Um, and you know, again, just makes the game easier. But at the same time. I'm going to go back to my original point, which is both of these options open up the game's accessibility to players who might not otherwise be able to have those game experiences, hmm. whether they're, you know, they're too young or they're disabled or any other variety of factors. You can change th these options allow you to change the game in a way that allows it to be playable to this audience that is otherwise unable to experience these games. So now we're going to go into the into this topic, <laughs> bouncing off that, which is the monetization of cheat codes, right? Mm -hmm. But I feel like we're conflating two things here because you're comparing um, these free add-ons I'm add-ons not even the right word but you know these integrated game option aspects god that sounds pretentious but we're sticking with it <laughs> um that you know have been put into the game right off the cuff versus the ability to essentially pay to win um you know like these aren't the same thing well, so let me. Interject. I wouldn't view a microtransaction as a cheat code, even if the microtransaction wants to brand itself as a cheat code. You know, I, there are, you know, in um, Star Wars Battlefront Two, I think it was, you could mm -hmm. literally just like pay to get a win credit. Like you would get a credit to your account that said you won a game <laughs> just by paying for it. You don't actually have to play a match. <laughs> You would just pay for the ability to have a win. <laughs> and whatever progression came along with that win. These are not the same thing. Okay, so I, I do I do want to interject. So like, you can also look to, at, uh, I, I guess, a, a closer comparison would be that of Dead Space 3. Since we're, you know, we're not talking about competitive play, single player, very hard game, supposedly horror-based game. Where you can spend money to essentially buff your character to be able to live longer and take more damage fighting against the necromorphs, wouldn't that be? I mean, mm -hmm. like, uh, even I'm um, I'm thinking on the same line. Um, even Shadow of War, I know initially was badly marred by the fact that it was heavily based around microtrans. Well, not heavily based around. You could play the whole game without doing a microtransaction, but it was the microtransactions would accelerate, you know, your gameplay experience, mm -hmm. your progression carry on yeah but i'm just saying like the idea of uh, increasing or accelerating your progression of the game wouldn't that also you know have the same type of feeling of if someone who did not have the uh, the ability to progress uh, at a rate they felt comfortable with or had problems or you know maybe the skill curve was too high for them they can now pay money uh to basically uh, alleviate that stress so quite literally changing I mean, from that's, that's fair but mm -hmm. I don't, I think that's extremely poisonous because the difference between, I'm going to say Celeste and Dead Space 3, barring, you know, it being a completely different gaming experience, mm -hmm. is that Celeste is presenting these options in the hope of accommodating the player. While I don't think, I don't think Dead Space 3 is presenting you with the same options in good faith. I think that the fact that they're asking you for money shows that their intent behind these accelerations are not specifically meant to make the player's experience more accommodating, but are rather to overcome an artificial hump of grinding and monotony that has been deliberately included in an attempt to get the player to play money. Mm -hmm. Um and obviously, that is purely an, ass an assumption of intent. I can't tell you for certain that Dead Space 3 is out here to, you know, 
make you slog and then, you know, dangle a $25 carrot in front of your nose. You know, maybe, maybe they're offering these options because they think that some player, maybe they are doing this out of the accessibility action or accessibility angle action. Um, and, you know, that's their intent. Um, I can't say for certain one way or the other. But what I can say for certain is that Celeste is giving you these options without charging you for them because they do want you to be able to have that experience. Okay. I, 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 I can see the stipulation that you're drawing in the line to separate the two. And I, I, I do agree it with you. It seems strange to me that you would come out with an accessibility option for your game regardless of anything else and then paywall it that to me doesn't read accessibility option because now you're saying hey um like imagine if celeste's options were paywalled Mm -hmm. celeste is saying to the customer hey are you uh are are you too young or are you disabled or do you have some other hindrance uh, and you would like to be able to change these options, uh, well, this game is going to cost you 20% more. That doesn't sound like you're trying to be accessible. That sounds like poisoning the well. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Though I, I do think that might be going a little too far in the not necessarily uh, presumptuous uh, route. But so, again, you know, we can say for certainty that Celeste went that route specifically to be accessible to players that may have actual difficulties. However, with the idea of games behind uh, almost anything from Ubisoft or EA, uh, one could say that the developers intended to have some type of mechanics that would make things you know, more uh, accessible. But then the studio or the publisher was just like, hey, yeah, no, 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 take that and make it a paywall. And even if that does poison an intent, or maybe that intent was never really there you know, regardless, but for whatever change to happen, they say, let's paywall it. Uh, it does poison it. And even if you want to create that differentiation or uh, you know that 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 separation of classification between cheat codes to you know microtransaction one could still say that microtransactions of today because i have another topic to pivot with shortly uh, may have been uh, poised to basically corrupt what was uh, existing within the gaming community or uh, industry prior you know and and i guess to yeah, pivot about right yeah, and I guess to pivot with that idea, because like the, I, the concept of microtransaction is actually not new, and I, it may be hard for some people to either know this if they're really young or for you know people our age or older to remember. But arcades, you know, uh, one that comes to mind is Sunset Riders, one of my most favorite arcade games in the entire world. Incredibly difficult, and you know, there's a there's a cheat code to give yourself ninety nine lives. Uh, that cheat code is there mainly because the game was designed around being difficult. One hit, you, know, you automatically die. So you would spend more quarters at the arcade to stay alive. So technically that is a microtransaction. You pay for more lives so you can keep going. Uh, so that notion or the idea behind microtransactions is actually nothing new. It's just kind of how See, the industry so has... I, I think there's a difference there. Again, um, mm-hmm. I like how because I like how the closer we look at these things, the more you have to um, separate the differences. Yeah, or zoom in on the differences. Stipulate that's the word I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. The more you have to stipulate on, because yes, arcades were coin eaters, but they were only coin eaters, and part of the social contract of the arcade was that you're coming here to spend your quarters. The only charge of walking into the arcade was however much gas money it took you to get here. And <sighs> and then you would, you know, spend... It, I, I think it's a different experience than when you pay $60 for a AAA title, and then it also asks you for your quarters. The, the I've only... already paid you $60 to walk in the door. Yeah, the, the only caveat there is most of the time you're aware of, of that game having microtransactions even before you buy it. And I mean, so one could argue God, the God social. Forbid, you don't. True, um, true. True, absolutely true. 
But to be to be fair, you you could argue that some arcade games, you know, you did not know that they were designed to be you know coin eaters. There probably are some car, uh, arcade games where if you spend no, one no, that's, quarter, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Um, but I do think that there's a difference between no. being asked for a quarter and being asked for twenty dollars. I, I, um, I, you know, inflation notwithstanding, obviously. Yes. Um, I just I feel like when these microtransactions come out and they're like, hey. You know, we're whether it's you know good faith or amplifying your experience or anything like that, and we're not even going to talk about DLC because I think that's, <laughs> that's the whole type of thing. Yeah, but basically, I feel like when games ask you for that kind of money, they and not always, but it feels like, especially in the realm of you know EA and. So forth and so on. Uh, I could name the black sheep forever, but <laughs> awkward. Um, <laughs> it just feels like you're not getting your quarters worth. Yeah, you and know? I and, and I do agree, and I, I, I kind of want to make that really clear that I, I do agree with you in the stance of the differences. The but I, from my perspective, I see it more as these differences. Is it, is stem. it similar? Yes. Is there precedent? Arguably, yes. I, I will even go further and say that it's, it's more than just being similar. I, I would say that the current the current stance of today, the take on, on micro, microtransactions, DLC, etc., is for better or for worse, the evolution of the mechanics that we had in you know uh, in the past. They're, they're not the exact same, but the idea of hey, you know. People come to play these games and, you know, we can make games uh, coin eaters. We can take that idea and warp it to something, in my opinion, much worse. And so they, they take that idea and it, less of an it, less of an evolution, more of a mutation. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually a, a better take, a better. Uh, uh, because let me tell you, natural selection would have killed these companies a long time ago. <laughs> uh, so... <laughs> Season one, we had a very specific thing we would say to the listeners out there when it came to games, DLCs, and like even uh, pre-ordering. If you know they're don't. out there, don't <laughs> pre-order. If if you don't like games that have microtransactions, don't pay for microtransactions. Yet they still do, and so well, <laughs> our listeners don't. Our listeners are smart, intelligent people. You better um, not. We're very beautiful. Oh, so precious. And your parents so, would be proud of them. They're they're uh they're clever girls and boys. They're uh they're Maybellings and and, and May Bay, May, May, Maybacks, Maybox. I don't know. We've don't gone know too saying. far. We need to too stop. too far. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I I had some some note in here saying you know uh so is it really hard to blame developers when this practice has long existed? I want to go further and say, and that users and, and the consumers continue to partake in it, uh, just probably not abused in the same way as today or uh, seen as problematic by the younger uh, audience. Um, and then I preface this by saying, are we the old folks yelling at clouds? And that's a reference to The Simpsons if someone is too young or too forgetful to remember that news article. And I, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but I will say this was a very good topic. We, we pulled something really great out of that. Are you surprised? Kinda, because I, I thought it was going to be a really you know quick. Ah, you, you know, wound me. <laughs> no, no, not 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 because you didn't have anything to say about. Because it. Like, it was like one of those. Yeah, microtransactions suck, and you know cheat codes. You know aren't really as prominent well, as they are today. And here's the thing: I feel like mm -hmm. I've said something to this effect before, but. No matter how much you, you know, com you know, complain about certain aspects of the video game industry, whether it's microtransactions or people getting overworked or, you know, X, Y, Z, you name it. No matter how bad it is, no matter how much you don't like it, no matter how much you wish it would stop, as long as it keeps making money, it's going to continue. Yep. Why do these AAA games have microtransactions in them because people will buy them yep so forth and so on so be the change you want to see in the video game industry and mm. don't and by that i mean don't burn down ea headquarters <laughs> i know that's the change we want to see but don't <laughs> don't do that 
we don't condone violence outside of video games. Oh, 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 oh! Make a indie, uh, a indie game, um, and like call it um, uh, E dot A uh, uh, Retribution Simulator or something. I don't know. And it's, it's literally just you, the player, destroying a virtual building of EA. Please don't go too far though. I don't want to end up like um, what was that one really edgy game that had like hatred. News- Yes, yes. Which look, you know, I don't care. It's a video game, but at the same time, and like, don't, I care. don't really. Oh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I think you can go too far. Oh well, yeah, but like, I don't, I don't think there should be anything stopping a creator from doing so. I just think that it's the right of any platform to say, no, we think you've gone too far. We won't let you on our platform. But you know, uh, someone yeah, makes that. It, that I would agree with. Yeah, you know. but I mean. As as an extension, why even go that far? Don't don't do it. I, mm, I think that's a very shaky territory, but yeah, because I, 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 I no, I, I I agree with that. No, I understand what you mean. I agree okay. with that assessment because as soon as the lines start getting drawn, it's just like, okay, who's drawing these lines? Where and why? Yes. Um, but I think that just as like a cultural maxim, I I think that you know we can we can all agree that you know that like. There is a, you know, video games, I'm, I'm making hand gestures, you can't see them. <laughs> video games have a very high ceiling for what they can portray. But I think that once you've gotten to that ceiling, you don't need to go any further. There's only so many people you can kill in a video game before it becomes like, okay. And that number is really, really high. I've killed a lot of people in video games. <laughs> in video games. But there do is not a number. Take that out of context. <laughs> there is a number. I don't know what it is, but there is a number. Don't, don't please don't take this as a challenge. Don't yeah. go to the number. Yeah. And also portrayal, you know. Uh, 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 that can be a, a topic within its own right, though. I'm not sure I would want to have that topic on actual podcast because it can, it can get a little too uncomfortable in general. And the reason why I bring that up is because a lot of conversations around things like uh, The Last of Us 2, the amount of violence in that game and the message along with it, even if some people suggest that it's beating the player over the head with that message, which, you know, hey, you know, it's your opinion on how something is, is displayed, but clearly the message is there and it's clear, yada, yada, yada. Uh, also, Grand Theft Auto Five storyline. There's a scene with Trevor and about torture, etc. Yada yada yada. And uh, all I will say is it's a it's a very complex thing. And while I will say, look, everyone has the freedom to create something fictional to their uh, to their desires. That does not protect you from people's response and thoughts of you uh, related to said creations. And the only funny little irony with this is there is a mangaka, a manga creator, Arthur, um, who creates a really twisted horror manga. Uh, it's really actually very artistic and it's known to be what, one of the, the biggest you know, horror things out there. But he is such a normal down to earth dude that we know of. And it's really weird to actually see him uh, uh, like interact with because everyone thought that he was like this really creepy dude with long hair who was stuck in a basement but no he's this guy who just wears a sweater vest he he gardens um and he likes the beatles it's, 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 it's weird someone in the comments will will I like how you said that we know of oh, yeah, yeah. when describing oh. his personality like yes. disclaimer this man may actually be the next ted bundy yes and that could be anybody by the way i i, I want to make that like specifically clear like if you if you draw really messed up things, you can be the nicest person in the world. If you draw the most cutest of things, like puppy dog tails and butterfly wings and 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 raindrop candy rain sprinkles, you could be a twisted mf'er who is just out ready to kill the everybody in their sights. Someone's actions are not always a clear indication of who they are in private. Like this, this spoiler alert for people who have not gotten to the real world to 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 interact with people yet, like. Legitimately. Spoiler alert for reality. Yes. <laughs> Whew. Oh, man. Well, um, to be fair, I, I don't think our next topic will even um, will actually uh, top our, our, what we just discussed. All right, um, let's, uh, let's come back down. Some people might everybody, get riled up about this. 
Everybody take a take a brief mentat phase. <laughs> hey. Mm. Fallout. No, mentats. Um, the... Actually Dune, but Oh, I did not know Dune. Huh. I don't remember Mentats being in Dune. I mean they weren't drugs. It's just meditation. Yeah. Oh ah. Ah, that okay. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. And also, to be fair, uh, Fallout, Mentats, well, I guess they are a type of drug. Not a not a hard substance, but yeah, okay. Weird. Weird. Really, really weird. Uh, cyberpunk. Okay. Well, uh, I guess uh, first, Zane. Speaking who's of going Fallout. With... <laughs> oh, boy. Ooh, before set Fallout. Uh, editing Magic Go, sponsor read, some type of um, uh, insert here. Ooh. Are you enjoying the podcast? Well, would you like to get involved and cultivate the community at the same time? Feel free to join the Discord server if that is correct. Simply go to discord.chat slash essence of Zen and you can take part in giving suggestions for the podcast as well as simply hanging out with us and others in the EOC community. That also includes hanging out during the game streams or taking part in the uh, creation of our EOZ videos related around other subjects such as comics, manga, uh, anime, movies, and much more. So again, if you want to join us in our Discord community, simply go to discord.chat slash essence of Zen. We'll see you on the server. And we're back. So about them fallouts. Um... Uh, cyberpunk, man. Um, so I, ooh, I have the hot take on this. This game has not, had some serious fallout. Y- yes, yes. Some I think is rightfully deserved. Some I think has to do with the hype and just people's uh, knee jerk reaction of not uh, living up to set hype. But I want to dive in and talk about literal the goods and the bads. I mean, I and, believe we have warned our listeners before as to uh, the hazards of the hype train. Oh, yes. um, the hype train has no brakes, um, and uh, you should not get on a train with no brakes. I don't feel like I got to explain that, but <laughs> I don't, don't know. Do maybe it. You might have some in, um... in the gaming industry and in real life. When you get on a train, ask the conductor: Are there brakes on, on this train? train. <laughs> he says no. Get off the train. Uh, we just saved you not from being a part of a weird action movie. Like if you if you see Liam Neeson on that train. And then the conductor also says there are no brakes on that train. Get off. You are likely not going to survive. Well, I mean, if Liam Neeson's on the train, maybe stay on. You know, no. <laughs> Liam will survive. Someone that Liam yeah, is will. after he may will. survive. <laughs> you. <laughs> There's a good chance you might not. Um, but no, and also to to preference and to give people a, a quick heads up. No, I'm not sponsored by CD Projekt Red. No, I did not get the game for free. I like CD Projekt Red, and I uh, was looking forward to uh, Cyberpunk 2077. I bought it the day it came out. Uh, I, I, I know it. you were, Zane. You talked about it a lot on, our, on Season 1. Yes. Uh, I bought it on their platform, that being uh, GOG Galaxy, or just GOG, whatever. Um, and I, 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 I enjoyed it. I had very minimum problems. I never had anything game-breaking. The only experiences of problems that I experienced were... Uh, uh, sometimes some animations had like uh, artifacts where when Jackie was eating noodles, uh, a second pair of chopsticks spawned and just was kind of floating off to the side. That was like the worst, worst experience I think I've had so far. And maybe like one or two T posing at a very, very far distance where the draw distance wasn't close enough. And so as I got closer, they would fix. Sometimes they did not. That was probably like the worst experience that I've had. And I, I've put in over, oh, I think 20, 30, 30, 40 hours. So a lot of hours. Uh, I have stopped because they've been pushing out a bunch of updates and I've been hearing about certain updates potentially adding game breaking things. So I said, hey, I can stop where I am now and wait till things kind of settle down, which we will talk soon because that may not settle down for a good minute. Um, but, but yeah, my experience, not that, not that bad. I am not blind, however, to the people who bought the game on PS3 and Xbox One. And the pictures, the videos, and the horrific problems that exist, not only that... What do you mean the PS4? Oh, yeah, I said PS3. I meant PS4, yes, because I forget PS5 is what's new, not the PS4. What is the current generation? You know, as many people who, who says good on PlayStation for just having a very simple like number of things, it makes it really hard for me now to remember which number is the latest. Uh-oh. I mean, that, you're old. That, 
Yes, I, yeah, I was just about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and also, uh, you know, recent modders found out that there are certain uh, mechanics in the game in the, on the back end that aren't working. So some perks aren't working as they're supposed to. But, you know, those are some are things that uh, while one should not con- uh, commend because, no, the game should be in a much better playable state, it does not actually stand apart from other games like Anthem, uh, Fallout 76, uh, initially Red Dead Redemption 2 released on PC, and many other games. Now, that's not a, an excuse. It, it, it is not. I, I do not want to say that, oh, you know, you should not be as uh, uh, serious with CD Projekt Red due to these bugs just because other game uh, studios do it too. I'm just saying that the the amount of energy getting put into it should be equal you know, to the same energy you, you give other game studios that, that launch in very similar states at release. That, that's, that's all I'm saying there. Uh, but yeah, no. So, um, man, just, just very unfortunate for CD Projekt Red. And I hope this is a learning, a learning lesson for them and other studios to say, stop doing this. If the game is not ready, just, 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 just delay it. And even if people online give you death threats for delaying a game, Tell them to just deal with it because uh, I, don't, I don't know, man. Just maybe that's not a good sign to say just deal with it. Because like, do 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 consumers have a right to demand something early from from that which they support? Maybe not a right, but they have the freedom to do so. But hmm. But please don't. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, yeah. Don't. Absolutely not. And I, I, mean, I, really, I get it though, you know. Plus, wasn't the game pushed back like multiple times? Yes, obviously for yeah, good reason. So, I mean, you know, there's only so much hype that you can build up before, you know, you just end up forgotten. Look at, uh, I think it was what Duke Nukem. Oh, got delayed for like 12 years or something. I don't know. It's something ridiculous. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, you know, AAA game got to build up the hype. Got to get those sales. Um. And then gotta not be surprised when stuff breaks. That's that's the part that the community that a lot of the gaming community has uh, yet to master. Stuff breaks and they're like, "What? What? <laughs> Unforeseeable." <laughs> yeah. You wonder what's funny though. But, uh, you know, there's. Uh, I mean, honestly, it it makes sense that it got a lot of backlash because, I mean, I can't even remember what the last like really big triple a game was you know fair point actually yeah before that it, it feels when cyberpunk was finally coming to fruition it felt like it had been a while since anything else had come out you know i think the one um, thing prior to that was last of us 2 maybe does that qualify I, I, as i say maybe I, and it, it was it was a big game and a lot of people were, were very excited for it and to be fair, the response to it was. <laughs> it may not I mean, have that was because of the, the mechanics. story, not because yeah. of like, not because failing is a product. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, I hate to say it is what it is, um, yeah. because I feel like that statement's been uh, permanently poisoned. Yeah. But it's this is nothing that should surprise anybody. Agreed. It's just how AAA games work now. You release a mostly complete product that's playable, and then you, you fix it later. Patch it into a uh, <laughs> into a more playable state. And again, I want uh, the listeners and viewers who play video games think about the, all the games you play, all the games that you really enjoy. Did you buy that game on day one? If you did, think about your experience on day one as compared to the last time you've played it. Oftentimes, we will get a game day one, and it will not be up to uh, our, our actual standards, right? And then a month later, there's been so many patches to fix various different really big bugs or smaller bugs or just really experienced souring bugs. And then everything's fine and dandy. And then we just slowly forget about all the problems that existed prior. So I just keep that in mind, you know? And if that doesn't sit well with you then we need to start having a movement to tell developers, hey, it's okay if you need to take a little bit more time. Hey, it's okay if you need to delete that game. 
hey, you need more time to finish, fix some bugs and polish? Please do. So that's just, you know, I guess our, our take on it. But I was going to say. And also marketing needs to calm down. Oh, no, way down. Just way. I, I, I'm not one to, to, to say, like, take medication, but marketing, take, take, take an, uh, uh, is it called Ambien? I think you're thinking of Ritalin. <laughs> Ritalin, maybe. Yes, sure. I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna say narcotics. I don't. <laughs> I don't know anything medicinal. Actually, I. I, I don't. Um. Anyway, what I was gonna say. What was funny is, uh, season one, we had one of the various talks about me gasming over CD Projekt Red and Cyberpunk 2077, and we had a comparison between that and uh, Hello Hello Games, Hello Studio. Hello Games. I think Hello, Hello Games, Games. is uh, No Man's Sky. Child. Yes, I'm gonna say No Man Child. <laughs> that may, that's a great game title. Any, anyway, uh, it yeah. is. Um, and insert uh, political commentary here. <laughs> <laughs> Who mans is this? I don't know. Um, but no, we. Uh, I I gave a point by saying if Cyberpunk did not come out well and it wasn't well received. I bet money that CD Projekt Red will, would be just as devoted into making things right, just as Hello Studios was to fixing uh, No Man's Sky. And time will tell, because like we're actually living that particular uh, example as we speak. Yep. That is the timeline. <laughs> um, and so before I get to the, the next actual breaking news of uh, Cyberpunk and, or CD Projekt Red specifically, I did want to bring up a very important thing I think that a lot of, again, people would need to hear. So, well, it would be after the, 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 the spark to this topic, right? So CD Projekt Red had taken down someone's mod of utilizing Johnny Silverhand, which is you know the likeness and model of Keanu Reeves, to um, be able to have very intimate uh, 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 adult fun time, yes, with said model, and it, it took it down, and people were mad. They some people screamed censorship, uh, and um, no, CD Projekt Red actually came out and said, "Hey, no, we don't really worry about mods, but please don't do that because uh, Johnny Silverhand's model is literally the likeness and you know scan of Keanu Reeves. We don't want people to just force someone's likeness into act, you know." acts that they did not agree to have that model take part in and personally i think that is a very strong and uh, a mindset to get behind because yeah no and I, I i do wonder if a modder creates their own model from scratch from the ground up their own model to look similar to johnny silverhand and they can they remake this mod with that model would city project red do the same thing with the same argument uh, because in this case, then they, they won't own that person's hand-created model, and it technically won't be the scanned likeness of uh, Keanu Reeves. If anything, it'll just be inspired by, and I think that does draw a line, for better or for worse, of a difference. And, oh man, do I want to bleep that out? Because I don't want to give people that idea to, to do that, but it's a... Ooh, don't do that. Mean. Okay. Yeah, yeah please, like, like legitimately, please don't don't do that to be a troll or don't do that just to be hateful, spiteful, etc. But it, it's a good question to have and to think about. But at the same time, it, it's quite it, it's um I yeah uh, I, I this is teetering into, into areas that I don't want to go into because I, I do want to keep this family friendly. But if you remember um the whole AI thing behind uh, uh you know when you superimpose someone else's face onto other people with AI and it, you know it, it makes you know what deep deep fakes, right? very similar and to an extent people just need to, need to chill out is, 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 is essentially where i'm going with this just chill out chill take a chill pill it, it'll, it, it will be okay Ugh. don't do this if you think you have a valid <laughs> counter argument put it in the comments we might do an episode about it we'll put some warning at the beginning of it yeah we'll talk about it if you want us to talk about it but we don't want to talk about it not right now anyways <laughs> Oof. Don't do it. <laughs> Anyways, the other big news with CD Projekt Red is that they were severely hacked. Uh, this week of recording, last week, late last week, maybe think it was late last week, maybe I don't know. Recently, as of February 11th. Recently, yeah. 
just the uh, catch all time category. <laughs> With, within 14 days, 14 days at max, three days at minimum. Um, uh, and yeah, they, they've had the source code to Witcher 3, Cyberpunk 2077, and Gwent uh, stolen. They've had supposedly documents related to the company, uh, HR, legal documents, and, and much more uh, uh, stolen. They had their entire um, drive, storage, database, etc., encrypted, uh, and they were warned, said like, "Hey, pay us, or we will, excuse me, leak these documents." And of course, rightfully so, in my opinion, I, I think CD Projekt Red handled this with the utmost uh, grace. They said, "No, we're not going to pay you." And two, okay, let's tell everybody what happened. The three, let's revert to a backup, to you know, so we can have our stuff usable. Uh, and four, uh, we make sure that no one's uh, private information, not even the employee's private information in terms of like their phone numbers, address, et cetera, uh, was not included. And uh, they're going to bring in uh, IT forensics to help track down what happened, who, who the hackers are, and et cetera. And I will say, because they did not pay the hackers, supposedly, according to certain uh, dark web uh, monitors, the source code was sold uh, in, on the dark web at an auction. And while we don't know the final price, we know that there was a minimum of apparently $7 million upfront cost. So, you know, hey, man, I feel bad for CD Projekt Red. I don't care what your opinions are on the release of uh, Cyberpunk 2077. This does not justify anything. N nothing calls to have your, your business hacked like this in such a malicious way if they were hiding something you know horrific and someone hacked their stuff and you know brought it to light like some really horrible allegations or abuse or whatever you can still have an argument about morality or or just cause but this is not that and some people saying oh it's funny because you know a, a, a studio that made a game about hacking and technology and, and corporate espionage is now living that reality again learn to separate fiction from reality these are people's jobs, these are people's lives, and these are people's livelihoods, or livelihoods, excuse me, that are being affected by this. No one wins in this situation. No one. There is nothing to gain from this. Absolutely nothing. Do I even want to do the discussion on public perception around reality versus fiction anymore? I, th I think the entire episode um, has been a, 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 a kind of love note to that, lo love letter to, the, to that that approach. We, uh, we might bring it up... Uh in a future episode but yeah, yeah I, th I think we've been uh chastising the audience enough <laughs> <laughs> long story short like don't threaten one of my rubber bands just broke don't threaten people for you know the, them like voice acting a character and they don't like the way the character did something and uh yeah who so I, I guess you know we're coming to the end of the, the, end of the show. Uh, Andy, you had a segment you wanted to dive into towards the end. Yeah, um, I wanted to do. Uh, I'm going to do a little section, just a couple of minutes at the end of uh, each podcast. I'm going to do a uh, Pyrana's game recommendation of uh, all sorts of games: computer games, board games, card games, all the games. And uh, this week, we're going to start off with a classic that you may not have played for a while, depending. But I'm going to tell you to go play it, because it's been patched a whole lot. And it just gets more interesting every time. It's like playing a new game every time a big patch comes in. Uh, it's also very relaxing. Take it at your own pace. Very, uh, very self-motivated. Although there are, uh, there are some more goals in the game now, so that's cool too. I am, of course, talking about Stardew Valley. Mm. I don't know. Uh, I know Zane, you've played Stardew Valley previously for nearly two hundred hours. Yes. Um, but if you haven't played it recently, I'm gonna recommend that you go back to it, pick it up again. There's a whole lot of new stuff going out with uh, Patch One Point Five. Um, I don't really want to spoil anything, but there are some new big goals that you can uh, you can aim for. There's a community board that gives you like weekly quests, and there's a boat you can fix that may have extremely far-reaching consequences. Um, <laughs> what the hell? But yeah, no. There's every time it gets updated, 
so much new content and uh this recent one has been uh, hitting it big i've been playing stardew at least once a week since since it came out we try to get it in more than once a week but i'm playing on a multiplayer farm with three other people so got to get all the stars to align but man the game is good and if you've never played it before then you are in for a treat assuming that you enjoy uh farming slash fishing slash mining slash monster fighting uh simulators plus romance it's true even the romance options have been expanded Ooh. yeah there are now 14 heart events Sounds scandalous. It, it's not. It's good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Don't let the graphics throw you off. If you like a nice, slow-paced, though it doesn't have to be slow-paced, you can just make like a ton of money. Um, yeah. Enjoyable pixel graphics. Forming it into a, uh, a hole that is larger than the sum of its parts good game go try it out it's not even that expensive i don't think i think it's 20 bucks I'm gonna find out <laughs> right oh <laughs> so at the time of this recording mm-hmm. um it, it might be too late by the time this goes up but at the time <laughs> of this recording it's actually on sale but no um it's 15 bucks actually mm. 15 bucks for the whole game the price has not changed despite all the extra content that keeps getting thrown into it. Wouldn't be surprised if there's even more coming down because the uh, the developer concerned ape uh, doesn't know when to quit. So, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's what I like to see. So, um, you know, go show concerned ape some love. Go buy the game. If all you're into reviews, that type of game. Overwhelmingly positive. <laughs> 97% of the reviews are positive. Go play it. It's a good freaking game. All right, listeners, viewers, there you have it. Um, Let us know what your thoughts are on any of the topics that we went through this show with in the comment section down below, or if you're listening to us on anchor.fm or any other podcast platforms. Uh, you can send us, uh, you know, voice clips, uh, inputs, etc. They will be um, uh, looked and listened to before being put onto the show <laughs> uh, you can find us online at eoz after dark um on it, it, twitter or almost on any uh, social platform for that matter um but yeah that will conclude episode two of season two of essence zen after dark podcast i have once again been your host zane zonokami blaylock joined with my co-host of today uh, andy parada baldwin we will see you all on the next episode which hopefully will be much sooner between this episode and and, and previous because new format new setup and i'm getting much better at editing and uh producing this so hope to see you soon um but yeah uh until the next time you i'm gonna sit listen listen and see or one or the other us uh, take care see you nerds (laughs) essence of zen after dark is a podcast made for and by geeks and nerds for all things geeks and nerd culture The intro and outro songs were provided by Pro Leader, who you can find their music at proleader.bandcamp.com. That's P-R-O-L-E-T-E-R dot bandcamp, one word, dot com. Thank you.